and gentlemen, good morning. And well, welcome to the Expo Center. For this mass of Christian prayer, Lieutenant Michael A. Anderson. Before we begin, a few announcements, please. As we continue through this morning, remarkably on schedule, yes. uh, the family has now entered the Expo Center. The Air One helicopter directly above us right now, fly by over the Expo Center. Yeah. That was incredible. Obviously. Inside, the Mass is about to get underway with Father Celentano from St. Rose de Lima. We'll let you watch and experience this with us. Using the prayer provided in the Thanks for joining us. And during communion and throughout the entire liturgy today, we invite everyone present to pray with us for the repose of Lieutenant Husak's soul and for the consolation of his family and many, many friends. After this Mass, Lieutenant Husak will be buried in private. And so, on behalf of his family, his many friends, on behalf of those with whom he served and those whom he served, which is all of us, on behalf of a grateful community, we thank you for being here to pray with us today, and many thanks to the many people who made this gathering possible. Please stand.
At this time, we invite all to stand, please. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Michael died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
Show us, Lord, the immense power of your goodness, that as we weep for our brother Michael, taken from us by a sudden death, we may be confident that he has passed over into eternal, your eternal company through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city of a new Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, or mourning, or wailing, or pain. For the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give the gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps, for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. <laughs> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory. Jesus said, to his disciples, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ.
When Mike was a teenager, or Hooch, as a lot of you know him, when he was a teenager, he was at Bishop Grimes High School, had an assignment to write on a passage of scripture. He did such a wonderful job when it was shared with his parents, they were excited, and he was so fearful that Dan and Cindy would share it with Monsignor Yannick, our childhood pastor, and then therefore Monsignor would share it with all the people, that he destroyed it. He didn't want people to see that, didn't want to be embarrassed. As you can imagine, like many of you here, didn't like the limelight. I wish I could have read it, but I don't need to read it. Because his life tells us what he thought. You heard, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Who were Hooch's friends? If you lived in Lincourt, you went to church at St. Daniel's, you went to school at Bishop Grimes, you were in the Lincourt Fire Department, Manlius Fire Department, Moyers Corners Fire Department, Rural Metro, Waze and Nova, SWAT and the Bomb Squad, Onondaga County Sheriff's Department, I could go on and on. I'm sure I'm missing some. But if you knew him, you felt like you were a friend. And quite frankly, you were a friend to him. And when Sunday night came, Pooch, responding out of the goodness of his heart, laid down his life for us, the Central New York community. Even before this heroic act of bravery, anyone who knew Hooch knew of his dedication to public service. You've heard the stories, you've seen it on the news. As a young man, he was already serving in the, in the fire department. We know of his public service, we know of his valor, we know of his courage. It's all on display, and you'll continue to hear the stories as the days and weeks go by. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of sorrow, but we have a lot of questions. How could such a good man be taken by such a senseless act of violence? It was vile and disturbing, unsettling for all of us. I want to propose something that we can focus on, that we have the answer to. Where did this man, this son, brother, husband, and father get his character from? Where did he get his bravery and virtue from? How could he run into building burnings without his fireman's uniform on? How could he stop to help people in need, to respond to calls, to save lives, to go to the call that night knowing that it could possibly cost him his life? How he, could he do such a thing? His Lord and Savior told him, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. <clears throat> you see, Dan and Cindy brought him up in the Catholic Church. When he was an infant, they brought him to St. Peter's to be baptized. And he wasn't just baptized for an initiation into the Catholic Church, but he really entered in, in a sacramental way, to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A power that is beyond us. In Romans we heard, the love of God has been poured into your hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to him. That's where Michael got it from. That is what made Hooch possible. He was raised to know, to love, and to serve God. And that spilled out into his profession, into his service to the community, and his love for those of you. It's that type of grace poured into somebody's heart that can truly pray what the psalmist said. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. All these uniforms evoke images of courage and bravery to us. <clears throat> Mike got that courage from Jesus Christ. 
says that Jesus poured himself out for us even while that we were still sinners, even when we didn't know him. You know, when we face evil, we face something dark, it can be scary. But here's the hope. Here's the help. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time. And we might think as, as Catholics or Christians or even those others who are with us might wonder, why does this man's death matter so much? Well, St. Ephraim, a deacon from the 4th century, wrote about Jesus Christ. He said, death slew Jesus by means of the body which he had assumed. But that same body proved to be the weapon with which he conquered death. Concealed beneath the cloak of his manhood, his Godhead engaged death in combat. But in slaying our Lord, death itself was slain. It was able to kill natural human life, but was itself killed by the life that is above the nature of man. Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. And with that, he gives us a new hope, the possibility of new life. Hooch was baptized into that faith in that church. His faith nourished in his household, in his parish. Hooch was handing that faith on to his children. The truth that brings peace to our hearts is that we're not alone in this. Kate, you're not alone in this. We love you. You heard this the other night, but I'll say it again. This community loves you. The brethren love you. We're here to support you, and we have your back. I stand before you, proclaiming to you that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. That is where our true hope can find its fulfillment. He walked out of that grave so many years ago, changing the course of human history, but loves us enough to know us individually, invites us into relationship with him. He knew Mike's humor better than anybody else here, and he loved every minute of it. He knew Mike so well that he prepared a place for him before Mike even knew him. And God will do that for you. He has done that for, for you. And although Mike leaves us early, we can trust that he's going to see the God who gave him to us. The God who loved him and willed him into existence. And that what you heard in the beginning at the rite of Christian burial with the sprinkling of his casket, in the waters of baptism, Michael died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. It's because of the power of God that Mike is able to share in that beautiful gift and that promise of resurrection. It's a lot of sadness that's going to continue to fill your hearts and minds. Many of you have not even taken a break since this happened. We pray for you. We support you. And of course, we grieve with you. I want you to know the hope. It's true that God awaits us in his kingdom. It says that God will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be always with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing, or pain, for the old order has passed away. So these coming days, I invite you to continue to keep Hooch in your prayers, keep the family in your prayers, the brethren in your prayers. Let us also pray for healing, for peace, and for protection of all of those who serve us in Central New York. Kate, you're with us, you're in our hearts and minds, not just now, but for as long as we live. 
Not sure if Michael was named after the Archangel, but I know how dear the Archangel is to many of you in law enforcement. He's your patron saint. God appointed St. Michael the Archangel to protect our law enforcement, to fight against evil, to do battle on God's behalf, to protect us. The word Michael actually means who is like God. And when we lay down our lives for our friends, we are like God. So I want to invite you, if you know this prayer, to pray it with me. If not, listen to it. Let it be an anthem for you to know that God is with you as you do battle, as you put others' lives before yours. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us, in faith, call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Michael, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all first responders, may they be kept safe from harm as they serve our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that one day we may be gathered together again in the joy of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Michael may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory, and with him called back into life. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us the eternal offering to you so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse. We are blessed apostles and glorious martyrs with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants, Francis our Pope, Douglas our Bishop, the order of bishops and clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Michael, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. <clears throat> There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Michael may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Kate forward, Michael's wife. editor hasn't had the chance to proofread this one. All throughout my recent schooling, Mike would read and intensely edit anything that I submitted with a fine-tooth comb, and he is for sure the biggest reason I have been able to excel. So needless to say, this won't be perfect. Now he's so much to everyone, 
first the loving son to Dan and Cindy, brother to Danielle, good friends to everyone at St. Daniel's and Mission Craig, and then on to a jokester and a firefighter at Lincourt, and then moving to Moyers Corners, and eventually getting his paramedic and working at Roll Metro. Well, applying for civil service jobs and ultimately securing his deputy job. I remember him telling me stories that looking back he felt like such a screw up on his first days. But I knew that wasn't true. He went on to train for his bomb tech. And his usual became really good at that too. I could tell how much he enjoyed that. And I even got to see some things blown up a couple of times. You stressed about promotional exams, training people, and the interviews. And this only showed me how dedicated he was to bettering himself and the others around him. He was kind to people and made them want to be better. And he seemed to know everyone. He couldn't go anywhere without you knowing someone or getting phone calls from someone. He often pushed me out of his comfort, of my comfort zone, and made me go out even when I didn't feel equally. He supported me unconditionally for years of school, and new jobs, and adventures, and kids, and even the days when I wanted to pull my hair out. He would come home from work and immediately give me a break. And I love these especially hard days. He even promised to give me a weekend where I could get that 24-hour nap that I might need. Well, we all saw him excel at his career. He made sure that I knew coming home was all that mattered. He loved his job and put in plenty of hours working nights, on-call weekends, call-ins, call-outs, and fire department calls. But he also made sure to be up for Little League games, Polar Express, meet and greets with the teachers, or even special nail polish dates with Nikki. He did his best not to miss anything. He was also the one who would plan five days and plan to go on a handful of trips. And while I still had to pack the bags for everyone and make sure everyone had underwear, he would plan the details of the trip to the tee so that we had the best time. For those who wondered what kind of dad he was, <coughs> he was the fun dad. The tickle monster at bedtime, the PJs all day while mom was at work, the let's get ice cream for dinner, <laughs> and planning whatever fun adventure we can go on. He made the best plans, like Monster Jam and Kids Bop, and he brought joy to all the little moments. His love for me and how he always showed it is instilled in his children. And by the way, I still don't think it's fair that they look just like you. <laughs> Especially over the last few days, Nikki will run up to make sure that I'm okay every time I start to grab her. And Sam comes up with unexpected kisses and hugs. And Gabe has been offering all kinds of distractions. The boys are most proud that he taught them to fish. But now I might actually need to touch a worm. <laughs> And Nikki is most proud of the fact that you taught her to ride a bike. And let me say, that weekend was probably the most running Mike had done in recent years. Yes, we will miss you. You constantly brought out the best in all of us. But I will be sure you live on in this world by encouraging your mini needs to be the best part of you that they have already started to become. And I will also hope that we can all strive to be the kind of selfless, inspiring, genuine, and charismatic person that each was. And I'll leave you with this quote. Bravery is not the absence of fear, but action in place of fear, even when you're afraid of spiders. <laughs>
standing. <clears throat> Diocese of Syracuse, the diocesan family, and to you and to your to Michael's parents, to the children, I do want to offer our deepest condolences and assure you of our continued prayers. And of course, wanting you to know that we will continue to be there for you in the days and the weeks ahead. And so, with faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently bury the body of our brother Michael. And let us pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, carry him home to be at peace with the Father, and may he rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of the saints. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Michael in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Michael in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
Attention all units, stand by for an important announcement in 10 seconds. Control the unit 45L2. Control the unit 45L2. Control the lieutenant from the Michael Hussock, or Hooch, as he was admirably referred to, was tragically killed in the line of duty on Sunday, April 14, 2024. Michael Hussock began his career with the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office as a deputy in 2007. After serving as a road patrol deputy, among other areas of expertise and interest, Hooch was promoted to the rank of sergeant in 2015 where he continued to serve his community with the patrol division. In 2021, Hooch was transferred to the agency's criminal investigation division, where he primarily served as the detective sergeant assigned to the warrants unit. Working as a tight-knit unit, Hooch and other members of his team located and arrested countless violent suspects and fugitives, not only in Onondaga County, but across the nation. In 2022, Hooch was designated as the commander of the agency bomb squad. Hooch and his team established themselves as one of the premier bomb squads in the state, working hand in hand with local, state, and federal agencies. During the summer of 2023, Hooch was promoted to the rank of lieutenant, where he continued serving his community as a commander with the Road Control Division. Lieutenant Michael Husak was a highly decorated and commended member of the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office. In 2012, Hooch was named Deputy of the Year by the New York State Sheriff's Association for his actions regarding an armed subject at the Regional Transportation Center. In 2012 and 2020, Hooch was awarded the agency's Medal of Valor for entering and rescuing several occupants of a fully involved apartment building fire. And in 2020, his actions leading to the apprehension of a subject responsible for a double shooting at the Regional Transportation Center. His actions ultimately stopped what was likely to become a mass casualty incident. Over the years, he also received several certificates of merit for his outstanding service and professionalism. Although active as a full-time police officer, Hooch's dedication to service did not end there. Hooch served as a volunteer member with the Moyers Corners Fire Department since 2007, where he served as battalion chief. He additionally provided his community assistance as a paramedic EMT while serving with both Moyers Corners as well as the Manlius Fire Department. He is remembered by those agencies as a humble, knowledgeable, and caring public servant. Michael Husak is the epitome of a lifelong public servant. However, there was one thing he loved more than his commitment to his community, his family. Hooch was a devoted husband and father to his three young children. Friends, family members, and colleagues remember Hooch as a dedicated family man. He displayed no shortage of love for his family and was dedicated to them beyond what words can describe. There was rarely a personal conversation between Hooch and his colleagues that did not involve a comical or heartfelt story regarding his children. His love for his family could not be quelled by the unfortunate circumstances that he was thrust into on a day-to-day -day basis. Those who worked with Hooch in any of his many capacities finally remember the even keel calming effect he could provide in any situation. He is remembered as someone that could always bring levity to moments where it was lacking, and very rarely would a conversation with colleagues not end with laughter. When it came to the serious situations, Hooch was always sought out as a wealth of knowledge by his peers and subordinates. 
Although he would display humility and occasionally admit that he did not know everything, it was still widely agreed that Hooch was still the best man for the job. Day, night, weekends and holidays, it did not matter. If someone needed help, Hooch would be there for them. Although Onondaga County suffered the loss of a lifelong public servant on April 14th, Lieutenant Michael Hooch Hussock will always be remembered. His dedication of service to both his family and his community will continue to serve as a benchmark for police, fire, and emergency personnel who work alongside him. He will forever be a role model for so many, and he will forever be missed. For the final time, even at 45L2, Lieutenant Michael Husak, out of service.
once again, Matt Mulcahy here with Abby Buttercavoli as the funeral is wrapping up for Lieutenant Mike Husak. Abby and I spent time in the Expo Center during the funeral mass. There was not a dry eye in the room, Abby. There was not, oh. including us. It was very emotional. Um, not a dry eye, definitely not. And, and particularly if you were watching at home, uh, Caitlin Husak, a young widow, uh, describing Mike or Hooch, as she'd called him mm -hmm. several times, being the fun dad. Um, the dad who would go get ice cream for <laughs> dinner. Yeah. Planning yeah. vacations and fun trips. Also also her copy editor, apparently. Yeah. That she, yeah. she missed not having him present when she was writing the very words she was going to say about him. Um, very difficult for her. Imagine the courage it took, the strength to get up there and, yeah. and show her children that I can do this, you know. Yeah. And she did. She made it through uh, very, very bravely. Also noteworthy, Father Celentano in, in his homily, some of the remarks were certainly personal about the man that he grew up with going to St. Daniel's in Lincourt at the same time, growing up in the same general neighborhood, knowing each other for a long time. But but also as, as a priest, talking about faith and uh, scripture and in this Easter season, which has been the time when Christians and Catholics celebrate the, not only the crucifixion, but also uh, the, the rising of Jesus Christ on the third day, as the Bible says, that that gives comfort and um, love and a sense of knowing that in that faith, you can, you can find what you need to get through times like this. That, that was, I think welcome thoughts from people in this building today. Absolutely, and, and the support for law enforcement, um, Celentano mentioned multiple times uh, for all of the the men and women here in uniform uh, laying to rest one of their own. What the church does to support these people, powerful. He is about to. Lieutenant Husak, his flag draped casket, about to exit the Expo Center here at the fairgrounds. Once again, he'll be saluted by his his brothers of the Sheriff's Department specifically. Also, members of the Morris Corners Fire Department uh, have also exited the Expo Center to be there to welcome him. That was such a big part of his life as well. Uh, Probably, I would estimate, about 2,000 other police officers still inside the Expo Center that made their way here today. And you were, you were noting they came from all over, didn't you? All over. I was looking at police badges adorned on their shoulders from Camillus, Salve, uh, Manlius, all the way to Bethlehem, New York, near Albany. Um, we mentioned earlier today Canadian police were here. Big show of support. Now the command to present arms, the salute. We'll let you watch this as we expect to hear from the bagpipers, Amazing Grace.
Lieutenant Husak's family now will take their steps down to the awaiting cars from the Thomas Pirro funeral home. Three young children that Kate Husak said they all looked like their father. Yeah, yeah, and and what a what a special thing um, for Michael to leave behind those three little ones. Um, you know, having what their father had, the bravery to be here today. And Nikki, the oldest, just having made her first communion when she was wearing white. She's wearing black for her father. Well, the mem members of the Husak family now in the official funeral procession in the limousines. Uh, his parents, his sister, nieces and nephews that also are, you can only imagine having an Uncle Hooch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, very difficult for them as well, losing, even if it's not your father. It's right. a member of your family, is very close, close family. And now they will head to the Assumption Cemetery where the family will lay to rest, Lieutenant Michael Hooch, um, in the Lincourt community where he grew up and served um, the Lincourt Fire Department and as an Onondaga County Sheriff's Deputy, of course, helped that community as well. That will be closed to the, the family. 
It will, and uh, the funeral procession, just as it was when it came in, will be led by a, a motorcycle brigade of officers from throughout uh, central New York, Onondaga County specifically, but also other departments with their motorcycle units. And they'll uh, close off some of the roads out of the fairgrounds, uh, 690 toward the Bear Street exit across on Hiawatha Boulevard, uh, into the north side, Court Street, to the uh, historic north side cemetery of Assumption. Of course, paired with the church, with the familiar steeples on North Salina Street. Yeah. Uh, the German heritage of the north side of Syracuse certainly highlighted in, in a long-standing church community on the north side. Mm -hmm. What happens from here? Uh, you know, at Officer Jensen's funeral this weekend, we heard the story about making sure the door doesn't close. Yeah. We heard a similar message. We heard a similar message from Father Celentano in his homily today that that embracing of the family is important for that to continue. Yes, absolutely. I think it will. There's confidence in that. Right? There is confidence, and I th think the show of support today in that room uh, really showed what what this is going to do for the family, the, the amount of support people are going to continue to give to this family. And we, we did hear, back to Father Santalo's homily, the simple statement that we love you, Kate. Everyone yeah. here does. And, um, and that extends to the rest of the, the family as well. So, so many members of law enforcement were here today. We also saw county judges, county staff members, uh, federal agents, mm -hmm. Uh, a remarkable showing of support, including uh, Congressman Brandon Williams, for example, in his second funeral over the last three days, as many of these people have been. Uh, I also thought very noteworthy that Syracuse Police Chief Joe Cecil yes. and, and his uh, leadership team mm -hmm. marched in at the head of the Syracuse Police Department, who's been going through their own grieving since Officer Jensen was killed along with Lieutenant uh, Deputy Michael Husak last mm -hmm. Sunday night, that they all thought it was imperative that they be here today Absolutely. to support. Absolutely. And, and like we've been mentioning, this was a huge show of support from law enforcement from across the country, truly. Um, and they are all now filing out behind us from the Expo Center now to, to go on and to continue serving their communities. Yes, and I think that's what will happen. There's also something about sunshine, isn't there? Mm -hmm. um, that's putting a little warmth on the faces of the people coming out of the Expo Center today, which, by the way, was constructed for purposes of entertainment, for yeah. hosting big events throughout the year, whether they be uh, a Lego show this past weekend, yeah. uh, maybe a hockey game or a concert. And here for the first time, hosting a, a very large funeral, mm -hmm. thousands of people inside, uh, out of respect for an officer killed in the line of duty. Yes. A full funeral mass in the Catholic tradition, incense burning, mm -hmm. the bishop present, uh, the choir was lovely the from the cathedral. Was lovely. The lovely. music added a great deal, mm -hmm. and uh, the facility was very well coordinated and turned out to be quite appropriate yeah for absolutely. the setting absolutely absolutely and and now all of these folks uh are back on the job effectively yes yes they are uh, passing by us now the county executive ryan mcmahon his leadership team with with onondaga county which uh is in charge of budgeting for the sheriff's department mm -hmm. making sure they have what they need yeah. when a sheriff puts in a request we need this they say yes and there's really no question that those uh, those requests will be granted even more so, uh, essentially forevermore, for the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years, they will come back to this day, this week, when two officers found themselves suddenly in a very dangerous situation. In fact, I should correct that. Seven officers mm -hmm. were there. Yeah, seven were there. And without the actions of Deputy Husak and Deputy, or Officer Jensen, mm -hmm there might actually have been more fatalities. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and we can't ignore the fact that right now the Air One helicopter is circling above us as we're talking, um, showing its support as well. The Onondaga County uh, Sheriff's Office helicopter, Air One, which helps many people and helps their search and rescue today, giving us a bird's eye view of really what impact uh, Lieutenant Deputy Michael Husak had on this community. The funeral procession has yet to really start to roll, still waiting for for a few others to become part of it that had to exit the church. It, it is quite 
uh, impressive, actually, as people leave. I keep referring to it as a church. Today it was yes, a church. it was a church. But as they leave, we realize how many were inside. It took know? almost 45 minutes for <laughs> every did. single member of law enforcement and first responder to enter the building today. As we speak, uh, the potential for danger is out there at any moment for any of these people who dedicate their lives to public service to protect the rest of us. And, and that was a, what they describe as a routine Sunday night. That's what happened uh, eight days ago. Yeah. Uh, a call went out, uh, starts with a traffic stop, ends with gunfire. That could happen at any moment again, and we certainly uh, all pray collectively that that does not happen. And I think uh, Caitlin Husak's words, uh, Michael's wife, that he would always assure her he'd come home. Yeah is hard in this moment, um, but knowing that he always was there as a very dedicated, loyal family man who who made sure uh, he was always working for others. And I think she also talked about the, what typifies uh, a person's work life in that setting, yeah. that they have extra shifts, that they're yes. working odd hours, they're working overnights, they're working long stretches of time without a break. Mm -hmm. Uh, part of that dedication, part of what's required to get the job done, and I, and you could have a sense that those who were gathered here uh, realized that. You know, probably yeah. more than anybody else in our community, the people in this room today <clears throat> certainly did, did. The procession is now on the move. Again, the motorcycle's out in front, mm -hmm. and and soon uh, the Husak family, including the remains of a of a lieutenant who certainly is getting the attention worthy of a hero today. Mm -hmm will be off to burial in Assumption Cemetery. Yeah, and and I think so many people know a hooch. I think so many people hmm. know someone like Michael Husak. Maybe not to the extent people are describing the man today, the fun family man, the jokester, yeah. the, the man who always made people smile, but we all know someone. And maybe today it's important to give those people a hug say hi to them or just give a little bit of extra gratitude to those people in our life uh, who maybe are a little like hooch. That's a great idea. Uh, I will share a conversation I had with Deputy Jensen's father after the funeral this past weekend where I was speaking with him about being in the hospital that night at Upstate and how he found himself comforting others uh, and found himself with what he described as a mission to carry on the, the joy that Mike Jensen brought to others as a police officer, uh, as a member of this community in Syracuse and in Rome. And I have the same sentiment I think carries over with Deputy Lieutenant Husak today. Uh, the stories we've heard about his life, all the people he's touched, that, that they will do their best to carry out what he was all about as well. Yeah, and to, to be so joyous in, in helping others and wanting to serve your community, even with all of the odds. Uh, sometimes against you. It's not always easy to go out there and do what they do. With that procession on the move, it seems like it might be time to wrap it up, doesn't it? I think so. Um, what's your final thought as we conclude today? I think today we are thankful for sunshine and for the amount of people that came out to show support and to maybe give someone out there a hug today. It's a great idea and I think that police all across our area and as the congressman mentioned to me today it's an it's an epidemic across the country that they deserve our respect collectively one man who was directing traffic here today said i hope this pulls people together brings the community brings the country together and certainly that is our hope too for abby buttercavoli i'm matt mulcahy for our whole team here bringing you this coverage live today thanks very much for being with us and uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon we'll see you tonight on the news at five o'clock thank you